back uh, dealing with the self-sufficiency of God, this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer the scripture proofs for the aseity of God. And again, going over that, um, the aseity is God's self-sufficiency for his own existence and that he doesn't depend on anybody or anything to give him what he has or for him to be what he is. He depends on nothing else to exist except his own self. Secondly, the implications that that has uh, for his will, for his desires and his purposes, that those things stem only from him and that he does not react to the creation in response to, take counsel from, acquire knowledge from, anything like that. Everything, all the knowledge that God has, everything that he is, his desire, his will, his purposes come only from his own self, from his own desires. Okay, I'm going to be offering six scriptures um, that deal with that. And the first one is found in John chapter 5, verse 26. I'm going to be reading from the uh, English Standard Version. Um, so I'm trying to get used to that text. So without further ado, scripture proof for the aseity or the self-sufficiency of God. Okay, John 5, 26. Jesus says here, For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. Here we see Jesus' assertion that the Father, that God, essentially, has life within himself, that he doesn't derive life from anybody, from anything. It exists within his own self, as it does with the Son, again, an attestation to the deity of Jesus Christ. There's some Trinitarian reference in there. A uh, very clear passage of scriptures found in Acts 17, verses 24 through 25. And in context, this is uh, Paul's uh, sermon on uh, on Mars Hill, uh, after Paul sees the altar to the unknown God. And uh, Paul proclaims this, he says, The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by man, nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Here again, uh, the very clear assertion um, that God essentially is not added to by human hands, by our endeavors, by our works, by anything that we do. We do not add anything to God because he doesn't need anything. When Paul says, as though he needed anything, he's essentially attesting to the self-sufficiency of God within himself. And uh, he, he further says that he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. Here we see the things that we need in order to survive, that we depend upon God as the source of those things. And as the source, God is himself not dependent on a source. It is contained within himself. Uh, another passage of scripture in regards to God's uh, will and purposes is found in Daniel chapter 4. In Daniel chapter 4, these are words actually uttered by King Nebuchadnezzar, um, a, a pagan king for the most part, but uh, after he had just been uh, uh, struck by God, his reason taken from him, his sanity, and he was eating with the beasts of the field, um, Nebuchadnezzar has this testimony to say essentially about God. He says, At the end of days, this is Daniel 4, 34 through 35, At the end of days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted my eyes to heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him who lives forever. For his dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom endures from generation to generation. All the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and he does according to his will among the hosts of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say to him, What have you done? So here we see the, the everlastingness of God's rule, his eternal rule, his kingdom enduring from generation to generation. And essentially, the, in comparison to God, the, the insignificance of the inhabitants of the earth, and therefore God does according to his will, among the hosts of heaven, that is among the angels, and among the inhabitants of the earth. He does whatever 
He pleases whatever he purposes and desires, and none can stay his hand, that is, none can stop him, none can refrain him from doing whatever he desires to do, and none can say to him, what have you done, that is, none can bring him into question. Uh, another scripture, Romans 9, dealing with God's purposes. Romans chapter 9, uh, this deals with God's will, especially in regards to uh, salvation, and particularly who God chooses to give his mercy to. Romans 9, verses 15 through 16, says, For he says to Moses, that is, God says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. Again, in context, it refers to God's mercy, God's compassion, essentially God's salvation. Those things do not depend on the human will or our exertion. That is just because I choose uh, uh, to have salvation, that doesn't necessarily mean it's mine. Just because I work for it, God, again, that's not what salvation is based upon. It's based rather on God. That is the root of salvation. As Jonah said, salvation belongs to the Lord. It is based on God, who has mercy, who is the source of mercy. He's not obligated to give that to anybody. So again, God's, uh, God's purposes and desires contained within himself. Also in the book of Ephesians, letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 5, and verses 9 through 11. Ephesians 1, 5 says, uh, In love he predestined us for adoption through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will again according to the purpose of his will there's no, there's nothing in the text that would suggest that it's according to his will plus our foreseen will or anything like that also verses 9 through 11 says uh, making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him things in heaven and things on earth in him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Again, God working all things according to the counsel of his own will, uh, not taking counsel with anybody else. Again, counsel within God and within God alone. Uh, and finally, back to the book of Romans, chapter 11 verses 33 through 36 and this is actually Paul's um, doxology as it were after discussing the doctrine of, uh, of election especially in regards to the Jews and uh, the plan of salvation that God has left for them and Paul exclaims this he says oh the depths of the riches and the wisdom and knowledge of God how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways for who has known the mind of the Lord, or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him, and through him, and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Uh, again, the idea in here is that uh, in God's ways being unsearchable, they're unknown to anybody outside of God. Nobody can peer into the depths of God. Uh, and comprehend his plan, save God himself. Uh, no man knows the things uh, of man except the spirit of man, so it is no man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Uh, who has known the mind of the Lord? Who has been his counselor? That is, God hasn't taken counsel with creation. He hasn't let creation act out and then God bases his knowledge on that so that God acquires knowledge and, and creation essentially counsels God to knowledge. Uh, that's not the way it works according to this and as we understand God's self-sufficiency. Nobody has given a gift to him. That is, no, nobody has ever added anything to God, given anything to God that has somehow made God better. We haven't added knowledge to God that has made God all-knowing. All knowledge proceeds from God himself. He creates whatever knowledge, that we, whatever we understand as knowledge. I don't want to make anything very epistemological. Uh, in here, but whatever we understand as knowledge proceeds from God, was created by God, as God is the creator of all things. And thus Paul can say, for from him, and through him, and to him are all things. That is, God is all in all. He has 
the source of everything, uh, given us the means, every, everything is working out through His will, and it all is, is coming back and resounding His glory. Um, and thus Paul says, to Him be the glory forever and ever. So there are just a few scripture proofs to show uh, the self-sufficiency of God. Uh, in our next study, I'm going to be going over the sovereignty of God, and that is essentially going to be an application of this attribute of a saying.